when we pulled into that intersection and I looked to my right, the only thing I could see was a pair of headlights about that far from my face. And that is the moment when I thought I was going to die. Have you ever said those words? Mark's one of my favorite speakers. I've heard him speak before. There was just so much energy in the room whenever he talked about some of the things that he experienced. I had all these misconceptions in my head that the trauma team might come along and nicely unbutton my shirt and <laughs> wash the blood out with some Tide and put it on a hanger, give it back to me later. Well, I was deeply inspired. I've been a nurse almost 30 years. You know, it just made you feel, from his point of view, how it is to be the patient and you know we don't remember that all the time. I woke up to a world that I was never going to see again. Because underneath all the science and everything you're really treating a human being who's in so much pain and so much distress. Do you prefer to be called Marcus or Mark? And I picked up the pencil and wrote out either one but my name is spelled with a C <laughs> and I underlined it a few times. <laughs> Barb just that quickly helps me retain an identity, gives me some control over what I want to be called. What we do has such an impact on these people in the minute that we're taking care of them, but for on the long term as well. But this isn't just a job, that we're really making an impact in people's lives. She says, I want to give you a little bit of information about what's going on. I've got another eight hours on shift, and after I'm off, um, then Rick is going to be your nurse. Now, you're going to love Rick. I know what's coming down the pike. What does that say to me as a patient? That then my transition of care is going to be seamless. You could feel what he was trying to convey to us as caregivers and nurses, that we maybe need to look at things from another side and think of how you would feel if you were in those shoes and how you would want to be treated. He brought it home. That was great. And she said, oh, okay, well, where did you have the surgeries? And I wrote out the name of the hospital, and she's like, oh my God, we are so much better than them. <laughs> and then she kind of laughs. She's like, no, I'm just kidding. Those are, those are fine hospitals. I just want you to know that you are now in the best hospital. What does that do for me? Exactly, it builds confidence that I am in a great place. And not only am I in a great place, but I am in a great, on a great floor where everybody gets along, everybody likes each other. So I think it's something that gets lost and gets forgotten in all the shuffle and the emergency of situations. You, know, you have to remember there's a person there. It just gave me so much comfort. Now, I'm not comfortable about being blind. I'm not comfortable about being beaten up but at least I know I've got people who care. Marcus changed my way of teaching, my way of nursing, just with his first book. And his second and third and fourth books, I think will impact a lot of nurses across the nation. Well, Marcus has this gift. You'll see people cracking up laughing with tears coming down their face. What we do has an impact in that exact minute, but also has some lifelong repercussions. The things that we do are hugely important and people remember them. We rush in and out, we check equipment, we answer alarms, you know, and maybe focus on the patient and say, I'm here for you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for having me.